Welcome back ladies and gents. In this teaching video I'll be looking at 6.3 projection at any angle. 6.3 represents chapter 6 section 3 of the person A level mass applied mass year 2 textbook. I'm going to start this teaching video by going through a very important diagram explaining some key facts. So let's have a look at this diagram. This absolutely beautiful diagram. So we have a horizontal ground. We have a point O. A particle is projected at initial velocity u meters per second. This is the pathway of the particle. It will strike the ground at the point A. Now this initial velocity forms an angle alpha above the horizontal. It will have component velocities. Okay, so we can form a right angle triangle, put in the arrows. Since this is the adjacent, it will be u cos alpha. And since this is the opposite, it will be u sine alpha. We have acceleration due to gravity acting vertically downwards, g meters per second per second. This distance over here from O to A is called the range of the projectile, or you could say particle. The range is the horizontal distance travelled from the point of projection to the point where the particle strikes the ground. Here is the greatest height of the particle. At the greatest height, the vertical component of the velocity is zero. Now, this particle is going to follow this pathway. So it will be here at a certain time, then it will move here, then it will move to its greatest height. It will continue moving until it strikes the ground. Now, at each point, the particle has component velocities. The horizontal component remains constant, it will always be u cos alpha. u cos alpha. So that is a very important fact. The vertical component varies, okay? It changes during the journey of the particle from O to A. Okay, so over here, the vertical component is acting upwards because the particle is going up. All right, so that vertical component, we can call it V1. Over here, the vertical component acts downwards. That vertical component, we can call it V2. Remember, it's different at this point compared to this point. And over here, the vertical component acts downwards because, yeah, the particle is going down. So we can call this component V3. Again, this component is different to V2 and V1. Right, suppose I was to take this point in the journey. For that point in the journey, we can form a velocity vector. Okay, so that velocity vector V will just be U cos alpha I minus V3 J. Okay, we can actually calculate the angle theta formed by using trigonometry, okay? So to work out theta, we can simply take tan theta is equal opposite of adjacent. So it will just be V3 over U cos alpha. And so theta will just equal tan inverse of V3 over U cos alpha. To work out the speed at this particular point, we just have to take the magnitude of the velocity vector. So that will be square root u cos alpha squared plus minus v3 squared. So these are some of the important facts that we're going to be using to solve some examination style questions. Here is exam style question one. So this model over here is for a stone. The stone is projected at initial velocity of 65 meters per second, forming an angle alpha above the horizontal. This is the pathway of the stone. It strikes the ground at the point A. Vertical displacement is centimeter. We are given tan alpha is equal to five over 12. And in this model, we are taking the acceleration due to gravity to be 10 meters per second per second, acting downwards. Using the model, part A, find the time taken for the stone to travel from O to A. So let's have a look at part A. 
we've got the motion O to A. So we can split it into horizontal and vertical. For the horizontal, we're going to take right to be the positive direction, and for the vertical, we're going to take upwards to be the positive direction. Horizontally, we must use S equal VT. The horizontal displacement from O to A, we don't know what that is, we can call it X. The horizontal initial velocity can be formed by creating a right angle triangle over here. So we can put the arrows in. This horizontal component will just be 65 cos alpha. Okay, and the vertical component will be 65 sine alpha. Right, so the horizontal initial velocity is 65 cos alpha. And the time taken t, we don't know. We can just leave it as t. Right, so what is cos alpha? To find cos alpha, we need to use this information over here to create a right angle triangle. From that right angle triangle, we are going to identify what cos alpha is. Okay, so we have the following right angle triangle. Tan alpha is opposite of adjacent. So the opposite is 5 and the adjacent is 12. Using Pythagoras theorem, it can be shown that the hypotenuse will be 13. Okay, so from this triangle, we are going to identify what cos alpha is. So cos alpha will just be adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is 12 and the hypotenuse is 13. Okay, so if we go back over here, x is equal 65 multiplied by cos alpha, which is 12 over 13. T. Okay, so 65 multiplied by 12 over 13 will give us 60. So we have 60 T. Now in the vertical direction, we have to use SUVAT. So SUVAT. So let's have a look at what we have over here. So the vertical displacement from O to A is going to be minus MT because we're taking upwards to be the positive direction. So minus MT. The vertical initial velocity will be 65 sine alpha. Right, so what is sine alpha? Well, sine alpha is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So from this triangle, it's going to be 5 over 13. Right, so 65 sine alpha is just 65 multiplied by 5 over 13, which gives me 25. Now, the vertical, a final velocity at the point A, we don't know what that is, we can just put across. There's a misconception, students think that at this point over here, the particle's at rest. Well, it's going to strike that point with a certain velocity, we don't know what that velocity is. So just put an X there. The acceleration due to gravity in this model is taken to be 10. Because we're taking upwards to be the positive direction, the A has to be minus 10. Uh, the time taken to move from O to A, we don't know what that is, we can just call it T. Okay, now, if we go back to the horizontal direction, there's not enough information over here to calculate the T. X is an unknown. So we must go to the vertical direction and use a SUVAT formula in order to work out T. So that formula that we're going to use is S equal UT plus a half AT squared. We can substitute the values in. So we have minus MT is equal 25t plus a half multiplied by minus 10 t squared. Okay, so this implies that we have minus mt is equal 25t minus 5t squared. We can take everything to the left hand side. And so if we do that, we get 5t squared minus 25t minus mt equal to 0. This quadratic equation, you can solve it uh, by factorising, by completing the square or by using the quadratic formula. So after solving this particular quadratic equation, you get two solutions for t. And those two solutions are t equal 7 and t equal minus 2. Now, time can never be negative. Hence, we have to reject this solution and we accept this solution over here. So for part A, 
the time taken for the stone to travel from O to A will just be 7 seconds. So that time T is equal to 7 seconds. Let's have a look at part B. Find the speed of the stone at the instant just before it hits the ground at A. Okay, so the stone is travelling on this pathway over here. At each point on this pathway, the stone will have component velocities. So at the point A, it will also have component velocities, the horizontal component and the vertical component. This is the velocity vector. We can call it V squiggle. Now to find the speed of the particle at the point A, we must actually find the magnitude of the velocity vector. But to find the magnitude of the velocity vector, we need the component velocities. Now this horizontal component remains constant throughout the journey of the particle, or you could say the stone, it will just be 65 cos alpha. Now 65 cos alpha is just 60, okay? So we have 60 over here. The question is, how do we work out this vertical component of the velocity at A? Well, let's call this vertical component of the velocity at A, VA. We're going to try and work out VA by splitting the motion into horizontal and vertical. Okay, so part B, we're looking at the motion, O to A. We have horizontal, taking right to be the positive direction, and we have vertical, taking upwards to be the positive direction. So for the horizontal, ladies and gents, we use S equal VT. The horizontal displacement from O to A, we don't know what that is, we can call it X. The horizontal initial velocity is 65 cos alpha, which is just 60. And the time taken to get from O to A was 7 seconds. So 60 times 7. So X is equal to 420 meter. That's the horizontal distance from O to A. Right, let's have a look at the vertical motion. We're going to use SUVAT. From O to A, the vertical displacement is a minus empty because we're taking upwards to be the positive direction. The vertical initial velocity is 65 sine alpha. That will just be 25. Okay, why is it 25? Because we know that sine alpha is 5 over 13. 65 lots of 5 over 13 will just give us 25. Now, this velocity V, we're trying to calculate so that's VA. The acceleration due to gravity is minus 10. And the time taken to get from O to A is actually 7 seconds. Right, so we're going to work out I VA. This on the web. To find VA, we're going to use a SUVAT formula. And the formula that we use in this particular scenario would be V squared equal U squared plus 2AS. So we have VA squared is equal 25 squared plus 2 multiplied by minus 10 multiplied by minus 70. So this gives us VA squared is equal to 2025. Hence VA is equal to plus or minus square root 2025. Right? So this here would be VA equal to plus or minus 45. Now, since we take upwards to be the positive direction and this velocity component is acting downwards, we must take the negative answer. So VA is equal to minus 45 meters per second. So the velocity vector at the point A will just be a V equal 60I, okay, 60I minus 45J meters per second. To find the speed at the point A, we simply take the magnitude of this velocity vector. So that would be square root 60 squared plus minus 45 squared. If I put this into my calculator, I get 75 meters per second.
Okay, so that is the answer to part B. Speed at A is equal to 75 meters per second. Right, now part C, state one limitation of this model. Well, in this model, we have used G equal 10 meters per second per second instead of 9.8 meters per second per second. So to make the solution more accurate, we should actually use 9.8 meters per second per second. But in the model, we have used 10 meters per second per second. So that there completes examination style question one. Here is exam style question two. Right, so over here in this model, we have a particle projected at an initial velocity 5ui plus 4uj meters per second. So this time the initial velocity is given as a vector. This is the pathway of the particle. So it moves from A to B at time t equal 4 seconds. And at the point B, the position vector is ki plus 12j meters. Then it moves from point B to point C. The vertical displacement over here is 20 meters and the vertical displacement over here is 12 meters. The gap between these two is just 8 meters. Okay, so in part A, we want to find the value of u. To find the value of u, we're going to split the motion into horizontal and vertical, and we're looking at A to B. So motion A to B. So we have horizontal, taking right to be the positive direction, and vertical, taking up words to be the positive direction because the particle is projected upwards. Okay, right. Um, if we go back to our diagram over here, the other thing that we can actually label is the acceleration due to gravity. And that acceleration due to gravity is acting vertically downwards, g meters per second per second. So we're going to take g to be 9.8 because in the question it doesn't really say um, 10. So we assume that g is equal to 9.8. Right, so for the horizontal direction, we've got S equal VT. The horizontal displacement from A to B is actually going to be the vector tells us that it will be K, okay, because the coefficient of I is K. So that horizontal displacement is K. K is equal to the horizontal initial velocity. So if we go back to over here, the coefficient of i is 5u, so that horizontal component, um, we take it to be 5u. So 5u multiplied by 4. So k is equal to 20u. Right, so that there doesn't really help us calculate the value of u because we've got two unknowns. So let's go on to the vertical motion. We use SUVAT. Now, the vertical displacement from A to B would be negative because we're taking opposite to be the positive direction. And in particular, that would just be this gap over here, okay, which is 8 meters. 20 take away 12 is 8 meters. Because we're taking opposite to be the positive direction and the particle is traveling downwards from A to B, the displacement S will be minus 8. The vertical initial velocity will just be the coefficient of J or the initial velocity. So that will just be for you. The final velocity from A to B, we don't know what that is, so we can just put an X there. The acceleration A will just be minus 9.8 and the time T would be four. Okay, so we can use a SUVAT formula to create an equation involving U. So the SUVAT formula we can use in this case will be S equal UT plus a half AT squared. So we can substitute all the values in. We've got minus eight is equal four u multiplied by t, which is four, plus a half multiplied by minus 9.8 multiplied by four squared. Okay, so we can clean this up. And if we do this, we get minus eight is equal 16 u minus 78.4. Okay, so that is absolutely beautiful. We've got an equation involving u we can solve to work out u. 
So if we solve this equation, we end up with u equal 4.4. So in part A, the answer is u equal 4.4. Let's move on to part B. Okay, we take a step back. We try and understand what's happening in part B. Find the value of k. Right, so we're going back to the horizontal motion. We've got an equation linking k and u. So k is equal 20 lots of u. But we know what u is. u, ladies and gents, is 4.4. So k is equal 20 multiplied by 4.4. And so k is equal to 88. That's the answer for part B. Okay, part C. Find the angle the velocity of P and makes with the x-axis as it reaches C. Beautiful question. Okay, so here's part C. The particle will reach C. Okay. And at C, it will have component velocities. The horizontal component and the vertical component. And we can just put a dashed line, x-axis. We're trying to work out the angle that this velocity, we can call it a v squiggle, makes with the x-axis. So that angle is theta. Now the horizontal component of the velocity will just be 5u. Okay, 5u that remains constant throughout the journey. 5u is just 5 multiplied by 4.4, which is 22. So the horizontal component is 22. The vertical component, we don't know. We can just call it vc. So we're going to try and work out vc. We have to split the motion into horizontal and vertical. And we're going to look at the motion from a to c this time. So motion a to c. Okay, motion A to C. We've got horizontal. Taking right to be the positive direction. And we've got vertical. Taking upwards to be the positive direction. So for the horizontal motion, we're going to use S equal VT. So the horizontal displacement from A to C, we don't know what that is. We can call it X. Remember, k is the horizontal displacement from A to B. We don't know the horizontal displacement from A to C. So we can call that x. Now, the horizontal initial velocity is just going to be 5u. And the time taken to get from A to C, we don't know that. We can just put it as t. So x is equal 5 multiplied by 4.4, okay, t. And if we clean this up, we get x equal 22t. Now that there doesn't really help us work out a VC. So we now go on to the vertical motion. So for the vertical, we have suvat. So the vertical uh, displacement from A to C is going to be minus 20. The vertical initial velocity will be 4u which is 4 multiplied by 4.4, and that there gives us 17.6. Now, a V is a VC. We're trying to calculate VC. The acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8, and the time taken to get from A to C, we don't know that. We can just call it T. Right, so now we're going to use an appropriate SUVAT formula in order to work out VC. And that SUVAT formula, ladies and gents, is just going to be V squared, equal u squared plus 2as. Let's substitute our values in. We have vc squared is equal 17.6 squared plus 2 multiplied by minus 9.8 multiplied by minus 20. So vc squared is going to equal 701.76. Hence, Vc is equal plus or minus square root 701.76. Now, since we take upwards to be the positive direction, 
and this vertical component of this velocity vector is acting downwards, we have to take Vc to be the negative velocity. So Vc is equal minus square root 701.76. Okay, so Vc is minus square root 701.76. Now, we're trying to work out theta, remember this over here is a right angle triangle. To work out theta, we're going to be using these lengths of the right angle triangle. Tan theta, ladies and gents, is equal opposite of the adjacent. So the opposite, we take it to be square root 701.76, divide by the adjacent, which is 22. So now we take theta equal tan inverse of our fraction. And so if we put this into our calculator, we get 50.1 degrees to three significant figures. So the angle that the velocity of P makes with the x-axis as it reaches C is 50.1 degrees. So that angle... is equal 50.1 degrees to three significant figures. So that there, ladies and gents, completes this particular exam style question. Please remember this important fact over here. The horizontal component of the velocity remains constant throughout the journey. It remains constant. But the vertical component of the velocity changes throughout the journey. That is a very important fact. We can write down the velocity vector if we know the velocity vector, we can calculate the speed by taking the magnitude of the velocity vector. And in some questions, you might have to calculate the angle that the velocity vector makes with the axis. Okay, so you do something like this. We've done that in this particular question. Like always, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.